Okay, hello YouTube. Um, this is the Canadian Greek coming at you again with uh, Comet uh, ISON update number eight. Uh, let's get to it, as we have a lot to get through again today. Um, this is, of course, uh, Bruce Gary's website. Okay, uh, the comet continues to brighten. Okay, which is this is a this is the rate at which it should have been brightening the whole time all along. Let's read uh, Gary's uh, latest observations that say uh, added color image based on Gary's November 8th BVRC image set. Uh, the coma is still green due to molecular emission. The tail is still red due to dust reflection of sunlight with a higher albedo at long wavelengths. Uh, added another total VMAG to the plot allowing for a model fit. This model shows total VMAG reaching 5.5 on November 24th. Uh, which may be the last day the comet is observable before it reaches perihelion on November 28th. Okay. Um, another thing with ISON, along with the fact that it's brightening, ISON has also sprouted another tail. How about that? This image is an excellent image, by the way. This is by Michael Yeager. All right, let's go back. Uh, this image was taken by Michael Yeager on November the 10th of 2013. It is awesome. Great image. Ison, green, as, as, as stated by uh, Bruce Gary's website, with a red tail. And now we have apparently a second tail from Ison. Um, I have a theory about that, but I'll keep that to myself for the time being. Um, but who knows? So here we go. And ISON is brightening now, and we have a second tail. Um, I should also let you know we had an uh, X1 flare, and apparently directly Earth facing. This is what I said I don't want to see happening, and yet here it is. Um, heads up, everybody! I don't think this one will cause much damage. Uh, maybe a few power outages, maybe nothing. I don't know, uh, but just a heads up. Okay, we do have an X flare heading in our direction. Um, let's move along. Found this article, and it's very interesting. Um, this is from uh, the Register. Okay, weird object propelled by its own jets. How about that? Spotted beyond Mars orbit by Hubble. A new little spin on it, being propelled by its own jets. Now, I gotta ask a question here, guys. It's being propelled by its own jets. How is that? How is that happening? I mean, if these things, these jets, are just um, dust being spun off the uh, the asteroid through centrifugal force because it's spinning at such a great speed or with such force that it's propelling the dust off of it, um, how would that in any way cause it to move? being propelled by its own jets. Anyways, a bizarre spinning object described by NASA as weird and freakish and shooting jets of matter that cause it to move has been spotted in our solar system. The mysterious rock located in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter was seen spewing matter from its surface by the Hubble Space Telescope on September 20th. On September 10th. Uh, then in a second image taken on September 23rd, the asteroid dubbed P 2013P5 appeared to be appeared to have swung around significantly. Okay, I'm not going to read this entire article because there is a PDF uh, that's linked to this article which I took to reading. Um, sorry, not here. Um, here we go, PDF. Uh, the extraordinary multi-tailed main belt column P 2013P5. Um, I will read the abstract and then I will move to another part which I think is pertinent, okay? Uh, Hubble Space Telescope's uh, observations of main belt comet P2013 P5 reveal an extraordinary system of six dust tails that distinguish this object from any other. Observations two weeks apart show a dramatic morphological change in the tails while providing no evidence for secular fading uh, of the object as a whole. Uh, each tail is associated with a unique ejection date, revealing, con uh, revealing continued episodic mass loss 
from the 0 0.24 plus minus 0 0.4 kilometer radius nucleus over the last five months. Now, uh, 0 0.24 is, let's just say, a quarter of a kilometer. Okay, so that's a radius. So this thing is half a kilometer in diameter. Uh, that's one-tenth, by the way, the size of ISON, which they say is five kilometers in diameter. Okay. Um, anyways, that's not a small. That's not a. That's not a small asteroid. Uh, just, just you know. Just, to, just to let you guys know. Um, as an interbelt asteroid and provable flora family, and well, I don't know if it's a and probable flora family member. Uh, the object is likely is likely to be highly metamor metamorphosed and unlikely to contain ice. Uh, the protracted period of dust released appears inconsistent with the with an impact origin, but may be compatible with a body that is losing mass through a rotational instability. We suggest that P twenty thirteen P five has been accelerated to break up speed by radiation torques or solar wind. Okay. Um, I'm not going to read the introduction. I want to come down here to this discussion. Um, processes invoked to explain mass loss from asteroids include sublimation of near surface ice, electrostatic levitation of dust. Um, that is interesting in too in itself itself too. Anyway, we'll continue. Impact and rotational instability. Jewett 2012. Uh, the orbit of P5 lies near the inner edge of the asteroid belt in the vicinity of the flora family of S-type asteroids. These objects have been associated with the LL chondrites, uh, which themselves reflect metamorphism to temperatures of approximately 800 degrees Celsius to 960 degrees Celsius, Kiel 2000. Um, as such, P5 is, un is an unlikely carrier of water ice. Uh, and sublimation is unlikely to account for the observed activity. Neither is it likely that P5 could be a comet captured by captured from the Kuiper Belt or Oort Cloud comet uh, reservoirs. Uh, numerical simulations show that such capture is effectively impossible in the modern solar system. Uh, Fernandez, 2002. Now, the reason why I highlighted this is because that's exactly what I think it is. I think it is a comet that has been captured. Um, that was on its way. Well, we've all seen uh, these little comets coming in, these little sun divers crashing right into the sun. Um, there's obviously a lot of um, there's a lot of things happening out in our solar system right now. And we're getting a lot of uh, fireball events um, coming, you know, um, here on Earth. Um, things are being observed and things are ramping up. Okay, and I believe you know, these guys discount the fact or discount the possibility of it being a Kuiper Belt or Oort Cloud comet that has been captured um, in the asteroid belt. But I think that's exactly what it is. Okay, and if we go back to here, weird object propelled by its own jets. How is that happening? How could it be propelled by dust that it's flinging off? Okay, that doesn't make sense. Okay, and the PDF here. Anyways, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I will put links to the PDF and to that article. If you guys are interested, to this article and to the PDF underneath uh, underneath this video, and let you guys have a look at that. My uh, my research continues. Okay, um, I've been reading some articles on um, collisional ionization. Uh, my research goes on. I'm expanding my knowledge base on what is going on out there and I'm keeping you guys updated with what I find. Now, if we go here, let's have a look at C2012S1 ISON. This is on November the 14th, okay, which is just a few days from now, from today. Uh, there will be an alignment between Mercury, ISON, and the Sun on that date. Um, I want to see. I want, I'd like to see how Mercury reacts to that to that alignment, um, and then we go on to, of course, Perihelion on the 28th, 
and 29th is when it's going to be going around perihelion on that date and we'll see what happens but we're getting close now and um, things are, are definitely ramping up by the way in case you're wondering here's P2013 P5 where it is located in our solar system um, now when I first saw this thing I thought it might be a splinter off of Ison okay or something that I dragged in with it but it is not anywhere near uh, where Ison is right now as Ison has just come through this is over here somewhere so it's not there it's not an, it can't be a piece of Ison or anything that dragged in with it but that doesn't mean that it's not another small comet that has been captured in um, in the asteroid belt which is what I think is what it is now they have just now they have discounted that um, in here okay in this PDF but that doesn't mean it's not so I mean I've been proven right time and time again I said that ISON cannot possibly be uh, have one side consistently facing the Sun that's unheard of and there was no forward-facing jet and I've been proven right on that um, now this is another great image, like I said. Thank you, Michael Yeager. Now, Ison has sprouted a second tail. Now, what does that signify? Could there be a breakup? I don't know. I'm, I have a theory, but I'm not going to bring that up right now. And I'm not going to make this a long video either. Um, that's it. I just wanted to bring you up to date to things that I have found. I thought this was very interesting. Okay, as well as the PDF article and... The, the article in the register okay weird object propelled by its own jets very interesting very interesting indeed and how would it do that if this was just dust anyways um, that's it for now uh, my research continues um, this is a very heavy read by the way photo ionization um, it's it's gonna take me a while to get through this anyways um, that's it for now this is a Canadian Greek. I'm out. Oh, by the way, there is one other possibility. Um, Ison, by the way, could have could have had a could have had a look at uh, P2013 P5 and said, "Oh, you got six tails. Well, I can do that same trick too, right?" So a neener neener kind of thing. I don't know. Joke, joke. Uh, I'm out, guys. Um, see you next time.